Welcome back ladies and gents on today's show. The six-wheeled F1 car returns, Jeep teases the EV Wrangler again, and McLaren is going hybrid. Plus, we have a Raptor versus TRX showdown. I'm Tiffany Stone and this is Haggerty's Daily Driver. Let's buckle up. What has six wheels and got banned from F1? The Terrell P34, the one and only six-wheeled F1 car. Well, now it's back, or at least a clone of it is. This is a continuation built by CGA Race Engineering. Now, it all started with a man named John Holtzman. He wanted to buy an original P34 for vintage racing. No one would sell, so he approached the Terrell family with his idea. They not only said yes, they gave him the original plans. CGA 3D scanned the original parts and even a frame to ensure it would be as close to the original as possible. Now the frame required such large sheets of aluminum that they had to buy them from Boeing. But was it worth it? Yes it was because John now has one of the coolest and most unique race cars ever made. Is it fast? Uh yeah, it's fast. The original won the 1976 Swedish Grand Prix, its first season on the grid. So yeah, once again, it's probably fast. And in other news, Jeep has a new teaser for the upcoming hybrid Wrangler. Man, guys, I really feel like Jeep has been coming out with something new every day since the reveal of the Bronco. What is even going on anymore? Oh, sorry, back to the show. Hey, see if you can spot it in this video. Technically, the paint is what's helping it blend in, right? Well, semantics aside, adding electricity will mean more torque, and that's never a bad thing. Plus, it looks like we will have an EV-only mode, helping you get even closer to nature. This gives FCA a much-needed boost in the electrification game. Yes, they have the hybrid versions of the Renegade and Compass already, but nothing makes a statement like a Wrangler. So, when can you plug one in at your house? Well, Jeep said the first electrified Wranglers will be in dealerships this December. Happy holidays. And speaking of hybrids, McLaren debuted a new carbon fiber chassis that has a place for a hybrid system. Currently, McLarens are built on something called the Monocell, a carbon fiber chassis that was designed a decade ago. Now, it's been the core of the MP4-12C, the 650, the 720, etc. So, it was time for some new bones but the explanation on which hybrid system is a little surprising. Now, in an interview with Autocar this past April, McLaren's chief operating officer said, the company believes synthetic fuels were a viable alternative to EVs. Now, with that being said, some people thought McLaren would hold off on the hybridization. But he went on to say this, that synthetics are still a ways off and that batteries are here now. The last time McLaren used a hybrid system was in the P1, and that result was splendid. I tell you what, if they can bring some of that car's torque-filling magic to its less expensive cars, we definitely won't complain. Coming up, it's TRX versus Raptor. Well, kind of, sort of. Now, we don't necessarily have a TRX here, but that won't stop us from arguing which is better. Our own Nathan Petrolia discusses these two super trucks with Haggerty contributor Bozy Tatarovic, but first. Hear me good. Ain't no sheep going across our cattle land. We're coming through. Okay, Mr. If you can beat me across the river, your Ford pickup against my prize horsey. You're on. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Open Diffs presented by Haggerty's Daily Driver. My name is Nate Petrulia. I'm an associate editor here at the website. And today my guest is Bozy Tatarovic, and we are here to talk about super trucks, primarily the Ford F-150 Raptor and the Ram 1500 TRX. Ozzy, without wasting any time, which one are you taking home? I'm definitely taking the TRX. It's okay. It's, why? It's it's just package package for me. Big motor, big Hellcat motor, nice suspension. So more on road comfort, which is where it's going to get used all the time. <laughs> it's got a nice gearbox. That ZF gearbox, eight speed, has just been wonderful in every application I've tried. And it's even though it's a little more expensive, it's just package for me. What are you thinking? I got to go with the Raptor, man. I, I just, I, I've not met somebody who said, man, I wish my Raptor had 250 horsepower more. Um, and the last time that I drove one, I definitely did not feel that it needed that. 
Uh, I think that it's better to go with the more proven package here. Uh, and also the fact is you can get it for a considerably, um, considerably cheaper price out the door. So, uh, you know, when you look at kind of the packaging and, and what you could put on a ra or a Raptor, excuse me. Um, I think that's more appealing to me as far as features and content goes. Uh, I drove a Raptor around the really awful roads in Southern Michigan. Wasn't ever really concerned about ride comfort. I mean, I know that, you know, the Ram 1500 suspension is kind of, you know, otherworldly, but I, I don't know. I just, I'm not sold on needing all of the extra that the Ram is. I can, I can see that. And Michigan roads are rough. So maybe you're just kind of <laughs> tuned that into your senses where, you know, if it's less rough, it's fine. <laughs> I like, I like my North Carolina back roads with nice smooth pavement. So, you know, I, don't rub I, it I, in, man. I, I enjoy those, those coil springs and I can see where you're coming from. And as far as price and all of this other stuff and power, the TRX didn't need that much power, but you know, they got the motor and they can market it, you know, as a Hellcat truck. So it, it, it you know, goes right there. It could probably, you know, it could probably have done with a little less, but you know, it's, 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 it's their kind of trademark now. So it, it works out and the price, I understand that too, but if we're in that high range, you know, Ten thousand dollars at you know seventy or eighty thousand dollars is not as big of a difference as ten thousand dollars at twenty five or thirty five thousand. So it's That's you know you kind of get up there and just you know kind of have to look at it. So there's you know there's there's two different ways to go and I think they're fairly similar. Uh, I'm still gonna have to go with the TRX and you know just to wrap that part up is if you sit inside a Raptor and you sit inside even a current regular Ram, the Ram just feels more comfortable and prettier inside. Yeah, it does. I, I guess I'll give that to you. But it's when you know when I'm bombing over Baja bumps, uh, I'm not going to be ex or explaining what you know the virtues of a nice smooth interior are and a nice pretty interior. I'm going to be pretty focused on the road. So, aside from having, like we said, 250 something horsepower over top of the Raptor, uh, if you look at the spec sheets on their two, these two together, like they're not that much different. Uh, do you feel that Ram's only play here was just to put a bigger hammer in the front of it and call it good? Or do you think that there's other advantages that the Ram has over the Raptor uh, from the outset? So the bigger motor, I think, was basically a requirement because it's pulling so much weight. Uh, they, would, they, they didn't really have another choice. If they put, you know, something that was matched on power with the Raptor, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be able to perform. So they for the you know they didn't have to go that high but because it's already in their stable and already developed they're like well let's pull this out of here and just put it over here but they, they would have you know needed at least 150 or 200 horsepower more probably right. than the raptor just to keep up but i think the uh gearbox in the trx i think personally i would like that the 10 speed and the raptor i'm not a huge fan just because there's so much shifting uh, the TRX is going to get the ZF8HP, which every application I've tried that in has been enjoyable. Yeah. And the variant from what I read on the TRX is actually the 8HP95, I believe, because it has so much torque. And that's used in the Grand Cherokee with the Hellcat motor and also used in the Rolls-Royce Wraith. So, really? Yeah. So that, that, that gearbox is able to handle a lot, of, a lot of torque and a lot of weight. So yeah, that gives me some comfort that you know it's going to be up to the task of whatever you're going to do with the trx yeah now the other big question that i have for you is knowing that the ram or excuse me knowing that the raptor is uh really close to uh the next model year for the f-150 line uh how likely do you think it is that we see the gt500 motor make its way up into the next gen raptor so that both are on even par with supercharged v8s going at it that's a possibility but with the focus of Ford and with, you know, EcoBoost and, you know, aluminum engines, bodies and stuff like that. I'm kind of hesitant to say that we'll see it go up there, but with, you know, marketing and everything being at play, they may be forced to do it. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say. I've, I'm kind of 50, 50 on it now because they decided to put a three, three and a half liter V6 twin turbo motor in Ford GT, which is their halo car. So right. that's kind of what pushes me to the side of maybe they'll just, you know, do some stuff with the three and a half liter V6, give it a little more power because that level of power in the Raptor would 
make it just ridiculous, <laughs> uh, but, you know, how much lighter it is. So it's, I'm, I would say 50-50 right now and whether we see a V8 in the next one. What do you think about Ram's decision to offer it only in one body configuration? Think I think it's a missed probably, opportunity. I think it's probably smart uh, because this, like you said, is an expensive truck. There's going to be a very specific buyer for it. And we, even with all the off-roady desert type stuff, this is going to be a truck for someone that wants a luxury truck. So this is somebody that would have, in another case, purchased, you know, maybe uh, a BMW M5 if they were a car person. And, you know, most BMW M5s aren't going to the racetrack, but they're, uh, they're being used by people to drive every day. So this is kind of the same deal here. It's going to be somebody that can afford a 70, 80, $90,000 truck that you're going to drive it every day. And maybe a small percentage of those people are going to take it off road. And it's going to be in a lot of cases, their main vehicle. So they're going to take their family in it. They're going to go to the store, go on trips or whatever, which is why I put a lot of importance on that suspension and comfort too. So mm -hmm. I don't think, I don't think it's a terribly big deal that there's only one configuration because that's, you know, they pick the most common one and that's kind of what they're going to go with. All right, let's wrap it up there. Thank you so much to Bozy for joining us on this episode of Open Diffs.